<laughs> and we're ready. Thank you. <laughs> Following is the agenda for the regular meeting of the Pompano Lakes Planning Board. The meeting is to be held in the municipal building, 25 Lennox Avenue, on Tuesday, June 18, 2024, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Formal written advance notice is required by NJSA 10 colon 4 1 at SEC. Has been provided at this meeting at least 48 hours in advance of today, given the time, date, and location, and to the extent known at the time, the agenda of this meeting. Such notice stated that formal action may or may not be taken. This meeting will be video recorded and will be broadcast for later viewing for the public. The notice was, one, posted on the bulletin board outside of the offices of the municipal clerk reserved for this and other similar announcements. Two, provided to the suburban trends, the newspaper designated by the council and planning board to receive such notices, and three, filed with the borough clerk. Please stand for pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. When you're ready, can you do a roll call, please? Yes. Mr. Simone? Here. Mr. Fracaro? Here. Mr. Trost? Here. Mr. Otto? Here. Dr. Pendexter? Here. Mr. Keating? Here. Mayor Sarah? Here. Councilman DeLine will be absent. Mr. Galvey? Here. And then we have Andy Brewer, we have Jamie, and Kristen Russell. Okay. Hi. Jamie? Yes. Welcome. Thank you. I apologize for being a couple minutes late. No problem. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> okay. Um, first thing I want to just talk about is one of our members unfortunately passed away between the last time we had a meeting and this meeting. Anne Marie Michaels was a longtime member of the planning board. She made pretty much all the meetings. Um, she was on the master plan committee. She made a lot of efforts to help the borough. I just want to acknowledge the fact that she'll be missed, that uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, she did. She was a good help for the planning board in the borough, and for that I thank her. Okay, minutes of the regular meeting minutes for April 16, 2024. And you all had a chance to review the meeting minutes, and what is your pleasure? Make a motion to approve. Motion to approve, Mr. Picaro. Second. Second by Mr. Trost. Any discussion, corrections? Mr. Keating. Mr. Chairman, um, just on page three, there was a paragraph where it was talking about a full proof, and I just want to know, was that supposed to be failed proof? Not yeah, sure. Okay. How far down? Uh, it's one, two, three, four. It's the fifth paragraph from the bottom. Last sentence there. Full proof, yeah, that should be fail proof, I believe. Anybody else have a recollection on that? If that makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I don't know what was said, but it does make sense. Okay. Uh, okay. Anything else? Thank you. That's, That's it. it. true. Duly noted. I have revised. Any other comments? If not, let me have a motion to approve and second. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that takes care of the meeting minutes. Under correspondence, there is a letter from the Borough of Oakland, Ordinance 24, Code 946, an ordinance establishing a dust control policy. Good luck with that. Wow. <clears throat> Uh, number two, legal notice, ordinance number 31, Township of Wayne, an ordinance amending chapter 134, land development of the Code of Township of Wayne. Number three, legal notice, ordinance number 33, Township of Wayne, an ordinance to amend chapter 134, land development article six, environmental protection of the Code of the Township of Wayne. Number four, notice of introduction of ordinance for Bloomingdale County of the State, adopting redevelopment plan for block 5105, lots 1401 at the SEC. And last we have is a memo from Borough Clerk Elizabeth Francis indicating that um, Mr. Vennon will no longer be the representative of the council and will be replaced by Mr. DeLong, Councilman DeLong, uh, who is not here tonight, but we'll welcome him when he comes back. So, that's all the correspondence and the miscellaneous information. 
Tonight we have an application before us which we welcome to Say County and their representatives. It's application PV24-04 Say County Affordable Housing Commission. 519 Ringwood Ave, Pompton Lakes, Block 2600, Block 3, Zone, Downtown Business Development 2. Mr. Kim is the is the attorney representing them. Welcome, Mr. Kim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we will basically have you control your complete presentation. If anyone's in the audience at a given time, I may ask for questions, but for the most part, we'll let you do your presentation, and then we'll go through our questions and comments. The engineer and the planner will be the first ones to go with comments, and then we'll proceed from there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So for the record again, Carl Kim, the attorney on behalf of the applicant, which is the, um, Palm, I'm sorry, the State County Affordable Housing Corporation, which was an entity that was created by the county um, to provide affordable housing within the county and use the applicant before you. We have provided notice in accordance with municipal land use law and the local ordinances vested the board with jurisdiction to hear this matter. And we have for you this evening, we have two witnesses we plan on calling. We have our site engineer, Jeff Morris, and we have our architect, Steve Coppa. We have other members of the design and operation team here to answer questions may be needed from the board, the staff, and public. Um, the application, in short, is where the old salt dome and DPW yards used to be. As you know, there's a demo. The salt dome is going to be moved to the north of where Locust Street is, and then the remaining property kind of to the south, so to speak, is what we're developing here with this affordable housing project. It'll be 65 exactly. I think somewhere we had the word approximately maybe 65 units. They will all be affordable housing with a veteran's preference for residents of the borough. Um, we have a number of amenities on the site which we will go through. Uh, we are in the um, senior housing redevelopment plan area subject to that plan as a basic zoning for the property. Uh, we have received the report from Colliers, the board engineer, dated June 4th, 2024. And essentially we agree with all the comments. We'll go through a few to discuss with you. We've also received a report of June 8th from the Fire Prevention Bureau, which kind of withheld comments. We received a uh, review letter from the uh, police department dated May 29, 2024. Most of those questions deal with operational issues during the course of construction. We will comply with those requests of the police, uh, police department as a condition of approval. There was kind of a, what you call a memo. There were some questions back and forth with the MUA regarding uh, water lines, the fire line, the sewer lines, and we provided them with the information they required. Uh, we have submitted to the county planning board, have approval um, with a few conditions, which we'll address with the county. And we've also received our soil conservation district um, approval, again, a few conditions which we will take care of. Um, unless there's any other further preliminary matters, I will call the first witness, Mr. Chairman. Please do. Thank you. Our first witness will be our engineer, Jeff Morris. Um, Jeff is going to put uh, some stuff up on the easel for the teaser that he testify. I'll put the screws up. Everything he'll be using for his testimony has been previously submitted. It's not been changed or marked. So we'll just refer to it to need to mark it as an exhibit. Nope. And just as a preview of coming attractions, um, one of the comments from the professionals was some further details on elevation. So our architect will have a new document which will mark and make sure we get a uh, copy to the board secretary. Um, with that in mind, can we have Mr. Please Morris? Please state your name and uh, spell your last. Uh, Jeffrey Morris, M-O-R-R-I-S. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you'll give this evening before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be got? Yes, I do. And Mr. Morris, why don't we just make it quick? You're a licensed engineer in the state of New Jersey? I'm a licensed engineer, surveyor, and professional planner in the state of New Jersey. And um, you've been accepted as an expert in those areas before other boards in the state? Uh, approximately 200 of them, and uh, as well as Superior Court in six different jurisdictions in federal tax court. And you also represent another planning boards and zoning boards? Yes, I do. And we offer uh, Mr. Uh, Morris as an expert in all three areas. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, please continue. Thank you. Okay. Just tell me which sheet so I can change it on the screen. I'm going to start with uh, the cover sheet, the final sheet. Okay. I'm sure everybody's familiar with the site. It's uh, it, it's considered 519 Ringwood Avenue, but it goes back behind and, and back up into Lennox Avenue. Uh, and along the railroad tracks, along the coast board. 
Uh, it's we. You all know it's the existing DPW site. Uh, the site was uh, almost 100% asphalt with a small amount of gravel and building. Uh, we plan on removing approximately 38,000 square feet of asphalt as part of this application and planting it. Uh, next sheet I'll show you is the uh, demolition plan. So, you know, a lot of the site has been demolished. The asphalt has not been removed with the DPW site. Building has been removed and the soil film has been removed. And there's a shed in the back of the long prairie that has been removed. What we plan to do is construct four story building for affordable senior housing. Which will have an entrance on Lennox Avenue on Locust Street, I'm sorry, on Locust Street, and an entrance on Greenwood Avenue. Uh, the two entrances, obviously, it's 65 units, so we require two entrances for uh, a means of uh, egress and ingress to uh, satisfy all the criteria for that. It is, we pushed the building back as far as we could uh, in the lot. There is a uh, Riparian buffer zones, which had, we had to respect along the Coast Brook and along the uh, Wanaki River. Those are respected. The areas that plan, we plan to restore are along the Wanaki River here and along the Coast Brook. They're 50 foot wide uh, areas of existing asphalt which we removed and uh, planted. Uh, primary entrance will be on Greenwood Avenue. We have uh, space for 85 cars parked around. And then the main entrance to the uh, facility would be in the uh, center. Uh, garbage and would be picked up on the north side uh, and uh, all utilities will also enter in the north side. We have a water system coming in off of Ringwood Avenue which would be a double fire and uh, domestic and which would run into the northern portion which was the machine mechanical drones. Uh, the, uh, Get a little further into the name. Jeff, if you wouldn't mind me, on that, that sheet. So, yes. um, one of the variances we need is for a setback to Locust Avenue. And presently, oh. Locust Avenue is developed, and then as we head to the to the um, eastern side, it's just a, a what we call a paper street. It's a right of way that doesn't exist. Um, the town is in the process of vacating that right of way. So we do need a variance there, um, which will go away once the right of way is vacated, because that will own the center line. So Jeff, you can just show where the pavement ends, the right of way, where that's set. Pa the pa yeah, the pavement ends where Locust uh, makes a turn. Uh, this portion of Locust was vacated by the borough approximately a year ago. Unfortunately, that vacation ordinance was not signed, was not filed with the county. So they have to repeat the ordinance uh, first and second reading and then file with the county then it will be officially vacated so just again show where that setback issue from the setback there. issue is the, 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 our access to the rear of the building the north side of the building which we use <clears> for <throat> garbage access and utility access is actually in a portion of the uh, right away of locus so that, that just to explain that now let's go ahead Jeff, please. sure but can you clarify once that is vacated what will the setback will will your property line move to the center line yes, yes. and what will the setback be then from the building or from the driver driver it'll be approximately uh 10 feet and then just so like where the where the other side of focus is the borough's recycling facility and which, <laughs> which the county is now, uh, as part of the construction of Salt Dome, will be restructuring part of that recycling facility so that uh, bins will be located along the road distance. In addition to, let me just show you what we're proposing. This was obviously to get also DEP approval. Is we're showing approximately 25 to 30 trees along Coast Brook and along the Warrington River. Uh, that will go all the way back to Locust Street and then also with uh, two of the larger trees we're fronting on the Uh There is proposed in the location of the existing uh, county uh, DPW facility one of our uh, infiltration basements 
with other infiltration facing uh, located behind these buildings. So those areas uh, would be also landscape screened from Ringwood Avenue and from August. <laughs> And let's see our great, great example I'll show it to you down here. Yeah, uh, and I'll briefly start going through uh, uh, Collier's letter. But uh, these are these are the areas where our, our stormwater management would take place. And then we would be discharging it into the post for, uh at the uh, Raymond Avenue County Culvert. Uh, we've received uh, approval from the uh, County of Morris because the County of Safe had a conflict of interest. We're in a process, we're almost complete with uh, soil erosion. I expect their approval next week. And in two to three weeks, we expect approval from the NJD to pay on this project. Uh, there's a series of walkways around the back of the building because this, this is now new, new landscape areas. we be very nice, it'd be a passive area for, for walking. These walkways go out to Ringwood Avenue and will go out to Locust. So uh, it's it's for the residents. Since some of the residents probably will not be able to drive with the senior citizens, they've been walking to the town. It's not that far away. Um, that's about it. Uh, you want me to go through uh, Mr. O'Brien's letter? Yeah, why don't we just do that? I think we hit number one when we clarified it's going to be 65 units. Um, <clears throat> I think we hit number two regarding the variance to Boca Street for yes. the right of way issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just wanted to run through just when I need you off. So number three, um, there was a subdivision line issued on the site plan that was um, before we understood what was going on with Boca Street. There will be no subdivision. Yeah, there won't be no subdivision because once Boca Street was vacated, uh, the center of Boca Street became the division line between the county, the property the county is going to retain, and the uh, affordable housing property. And then, uh, Jeff, number four, would you address uh, park circulation? Sure. Uh, we uh, obviously we designed this so uh, trucks could very easily, our own delivery trucks and fire trucks, could very easily negotiate coming in the, the main, main the one entrance in Locust and or Ringwood, and either come around in front of the building and out, or along the side if there was a fire. Uh, our fire. Uh, Siamese is located at the northern end of the, northern end of the building. So that, I would assume uh, the first truck would pull in here and charge, and charge on that. And then I think you did it briefly, but show the uh, the route for the trash collection. Route for the trash section. collection is very easy. You come in, back in, the dumpster, fill up, and then exit out onto Ring Road Avenue. And as a condition approval, we'll provide turning comforts on our Yes, trash. yes, we'll so do this. And then uh, before we hit the next one, the remaining variances, we talked about the Locust Street setback. The remaining variances in design waivers we've asked for, of course, again, not to cry the blues on dollars, but this is 100% affordable housing. We're not, we're not a market rate developer who's given 10, 20%. We have kind of a pool of money to play around with. Uh, money's very tight, as you will notice, and there's a comment we'll get to about there's a gazebo in the back corner. Right now, we may not be able to afford to build the gazebo. So some of the variances that we're asking for um, have to do with the cost factor. We'll certainly go through them and justify the reasons why we're asking for them. I just want to put it generally in context. So, Jeff, you would turn to number five regarding the landscaping and the parking lot? Yes. Uh, we do have an island in, in the parking lot. We did not provide landscaping in it. Obviously, we could, as I discussed earlier, we're planting over 30 trees as part of our uh, mitigation uh, for this site. Uh, and we we prefer to put lower landscaping in, in the island and uh, in that area. And Some then, more of a shrub yeah. than a tree. Right. And then uh, number six, we will agree to provide the curb return details on the revised set of plans for resolution compliance. Yes. S seven and eight kind of go together. They talk about sign details, and there's a proposed decorative wall, which I think is actually going to be the monument sign. Can we talk about that? Yeah, there's a monument sign proposed on Ringwood Avenue. It would be the, a standard county uh, type sign. Uh, I guess there's a standard county logo that would go on it, and it would be for the, say, a county affordable housing, which is identify the property. And we'll, we'll submit with the revised plans in detail on the signage, you know, the, the uh, finishes. Um, the architect will talk about the finish. We'll have to coordinate with the, the building, the sign itself. 
Uh, number nine, again, this is a, uh, a design waiver. As, you, as Jeff explained, there's quite a large uh, uh, network of walkways, and those are going to be an asphalt. The ordinance requires brick or slate or concrete pavers or slabs. So we're asking for that design waiver because, again, it's a lot of linear feet of, of yeah. walkway. It would be expensive to have it be anything but asphalt. And specifically, it would be the walkway around the rear of the building and the walkway out to Ringwood Avenue. The sidewalks on Ringwood Avenue and the sidewalks on Locust Street and the sidewalk in front would be concrete. And Jeff, you wouldn't while you're on your feet, could you show the location of the sign? The sign, yeah, the sign right. Okay, so that's an angled piece in the front. Yes, okay. and it'll be right in front of the detention area. Great. And then um so uh, they want so sure, it's sure. not distinguished on the plan what is asphalt and what is concrete. Okay. We will re I'm we will just show you it right you now. You just explained it, but I'm just saying I'm just confirming that what you show is actually a, it's a concrete. Right. So, so you're saying not, that parts are not. We're requesting asphalt around the rear of the building and out to Ringwood Avenue. The front would be concrete and the side would be concrete. Okay. So at some point that should be distinguishable. Yes. Yes. We'll revise the plans to provide the detail of exactly what's asphalt, what's concrete, so it's very clear. Um, the next um, item, Jeff, is the street trees. We're not complying with the street trees. We're not complying with the street trees. Uh, primarily, uh, as I indicated, uh, there will be two trees along Ringwood, which would probably qualify as street trees. We don't have a lot of room in front of the detention uh, basin and along Locust. That's another uh, stormwater quality basin. Uh, and again we're planting i think we'll at least 30 trees in the site and just asking for relief not to plant those everything will be attractive it's not it's not like we're going to leave this stuff bare it's just just trying to save on a few of the trees since it was a big hit to have to plant all the trees we have to plant around the outside Jeff, while you're on your feet the next item to discuss is the chain link banks along locust street we yes location yeah uh, we, we had proposed the chain link fence along locust street we can modify that to a vinyl fence if that was requested. Sure. And then the next, um, I'm sorry, was there a question? If well, I, you, you were missing some trees or, you know, we have some capacity through shade tree to get more trees if that's something you guys are interested in. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, know, that, that's something that maybe you guys want to talk about if you want trees on the side there. I just made a note about okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Good time. Uh, the next item, as I mentioned before, is the gazebo. Um, we will provide the details. Um, the setbacks need to be 10 feet from the rear of the side yard, which it, it is. More than that. We'll, we'll call that out. And then the height can be more than 16 feet. When it will be compliant. Um, and it's not in a front yard area, so we don't have to worry about that. So we agree to provide that. Jeff, could you address number 13, the crosswalks? Yes, the architectural plan shows crosswalks at a slightly different location. We do, and we will conform and uh, show what we what could make the two plans conform. Obviously, we have to show a crosswalk across our driveway on both uh, Locust and Ringwood. And I believe we showed a crosswalk out into the uh, island area, too. And then uh, I'll address them kind of in a chunk 14, 15, 16, and 17 uh, go to issues like there's two sets of. Um, zoning charts on the architectural plans and engineering plans and parking calculations. We're going to move all of those onto the engineering plans, make yes. sure they're updated, they're correct, and they and they jive with one another. Yes. The um, and string dimensions for the setbacks and, and those details. We yes, I actually bought a site plan which has them on it. Mr. O'Brien was correct. Uh, there was a layer that was had the parking tan, and that layer hid the uh, the elevation, the uh, dimensions. Once I took, turned off the layer, the dimensions were all there. Magic. Yeah, it's amazing how that works. Yeah, you, you AutoCAD has a whole new set of errors. You there you go. Up with. Yeah, you try to take off some layers so it's not hard to read and you end up pulling out stuff by accident. At number 18, the EV charging details, we'll provide them on the revised chart. Yes. And the locations of those and the revised plans. And the uh, we will be compliant, obviously, with the uh, EV statute and the local ordinance um, as far as number. Uh, the make ready, the uh, charge ready, uh, and then the schedule for uh, installing them as well will be included on the revised set of plans. Um, the next item, Jeff, you address the height of the light poles in the parking lot? Yes, and the reason we're asking for a waiver on that, and unfortunately it's a very difficult uh, plan to read, but I'm to explain it if that's possible. Your typical uh, LED fixture these days 
uh, will throw out light comparable uh, based on the height. At 25 feet, you can cover the full uh, two aisle and the parking space on the other side. So we propose three on the island, which would throw out light to the to the both curb lines at a, at the minimum required. If we had to go down to 16 feet, we had two we'd have two choices: either add four more lights. There's there's five total now: one, two, three, four, five. We either add four more lights to the building, or we angle these up and not don't throw them straight down. I'd much rather have a higher light, which is more efficient throw pattern. And it obviously, again, it saves us fixtures. And then, as far as the, what's proposed for the light size and height, is there any um, issue with light spillage to neighbors or into the residents of the buildings on the higher floors? No, actually, uh, you're better off with the lights aiming straight down uh, and out in the out out here, so they're not they're not aiming, uh, you know, at all or uh, In addition, this site is and you're well aware is isolated from pretty much any residential you know there's a multi-family all the way over here but i mean this site back here we're pretty isolated from all the residential areas thank you jeff um the next point in the review letter is any potential non-residential uses on the site there will be a um an office for the manager the superintendent of the building one of the units will be occupied by the superintendent so it's just for for kind of internal use, we're not going to have a, an office there for a doctor, a lawyer, a dentist, or anything like that. There's going to be no retail use of any kind, so it's just going to be the, the management office for the building itself. Um, the last two comments are architectural address regarding the elevations and the facade materials, and um, that is our engineering testimony. We're available for questions from the board and the board professionals. My first thing I'll do is ask our professionals to discuss, you know, a letter so that you guys can get your answers if they haven't been given already. Sure. So whoever wants to go first, go ahead. Sure. Okay. Um, I will just skip over the questions that you've already satisfied. A lot of things you said you will just revise on the plans. Um, I would just ask that, first of all, that when they submit revised plans, that they be included, sent to me and the engineer so that we can, um, you know, verify that it satisfied our requests. We agree with that. Um, I will, so in terms of the things that I have outstanding questions on, um, going through them, I think that the, so the, the, the redevelopment plan requires landscaping, both in the parking lot and the street trees, both of which you're asking for variances or waivers for. I think that I'd, I'd be interested to hear more about the street tree opportunity that, um, that the mayor has mentioned. I would also suggest that while the trees in the buffer areas are necessary, um, I'm not sure that it would be harmful to remove a tree or three to um, put them in the parking lot or around the perimeter of the site. I would also note that the parking lot landscaping that's required includes both um, trees and ground cover and the plans that I saw um, and perhaps I missed something in which case feel free to correct me did not even show ground cover in the parking lot or shrubbery or whatever you want to call it so if that is being proposed in in the um, parking lot islands um, we need to make sure that that is reflected on the plans um, and we have no problem uh, relocating a couple of trees to the two end islands mm -hmm. that, are, that are on the park. Did you, I may have missed this while I was taking notes, the, um, it looked like there was a proposed decorative wall where there is also a sign. Was that a labeling error or is there a wall and a sign or? It's a, it's a very short wall with a sign incorporated into it. And I don't know if we have details of that. The architect has, uh, proposed it and we were talking with the county today They're, they have their own version of what they want the sign to show okay and you will provide details yes, of that absolutely okay um yes i think that the chain link fence should be replaced with something more aesthetic um
the other primary concern I have are these lights that are being proposed at 25 feet height. I mean, that's the height that you're going to see in a warehouse where, you know, trucking is going on. I don't think it's in scale with the residential use. Um, I, I'm concerned about how much light that's going to spill. Um, I, I'm concerned that the aesthetics don't align with the residential building. Um, and I hope that that can be resolved. Um, I understand that the applicant is working on a slim budget, but I think that this is an important item that should be looked at carefully. Um, the other items were largely, if not answered, promised to be answered in revised plans. So. Um, with, you know, without having them in front of me, um, all I can say is that we will review them upon receipt um, with the caveat that if there's problems, there may have to be more back and forth or a, another conversation or hearing if there's really something that can't be resolved after the fact. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Morris. Uh, question for you. Just going through your testimony, you had indicated that you're anticipating your DEP permits to be uh, granted or approved yes. shortly. Which permits have uh, you just list out so we have it on the record? Which permits? It's a, a flood hazard area verification and a flood hazard, flood hazard area individual permit. Okay, and, that, and so the trees that you're proposing along the bank, so they require for mitigation for the, for the repairing zone? They're not required for mitigation because we're not required to mitigate. Okay. But uh, what in, the, in our dealings with DEP and obviously the horse trading that usually goes on, yes. we said uh, we'll give you basically a forest where, where the 50 foot from top of bank and they were very appreciative of that and they're still considering being a little more lenient on some of the other things they wanted us to do. Well, one of the things that I was go I was thinking that if it's not a required not required for mitigation, there may be potential to take three or four trees out but, of know, this area that. and move it into the island just because you know heat island, we hear about heat island effect and on a day like today, mm -hmm. you clearly understand how mm -hmm. important the shade trees and are. we 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 can do that. Okay, and, and that might, won't that won't impact your DEP approval. It should not. Okay, because I'm not I'm not looking to to create the waves. I'm looking to find a way. Let's put this. I'm not going to call the DEP tomorrow and tell them I'm taking three of their trees out. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Understood. Um, with re so we talked about the DEP permit. And is the DEP with, with the individual permit? Are they reviewing your stormwater management? Yes, they are. Okay. And you will stipulate on the record that you will provide a copy of an operation and maintenance manual. Yes. And it will be filed in accordance with regulatory requirements. Yes. Just a, a brief history, I don't want to get in too far into the weeds, but prior to uh, July 17, 2023, we, this would have been a slam dunk. We were removing 38,000 square feet of impervious area. There would not have been any calculations required. Unfortunately, now with the new DEP regulations, they can't seem to get out of their own way and uh, have uh, made us redo the calculations four or five times. Which is why I'm sitting on this side of the table. <laughs> where a year ago, I was sitting on that side of the table. Those regulations have definitely uh, changed my opinion, but that's a whole other story. Um, with regard to the to the 25 foot light height, you know, the board really should consider that 25 foot with with your fixture with the height of your fixture. You're up around second story windows, if not above them at that point. Um, it's not always the best option. It, it, you typically see a higher light like that in a commercial setting, whether it be a mall or a commercial parking lot. 16 foot definitely is one pedestrian scale. Understanding, yes, four more fixtures. I do not agree with something that might. It does create glare for people as they're passing by and driving. So um, that's one thing that the board uh, may want to consider with regard to that. With regard to many of our other comments, Mr. Morris has stipulated that he will address them as the storm is being reviewed by the DEP. We yield to them as required by ordinance. So with that, I don't have any other questions unless the board has any questions for me. 
Um, <clears throat> I'll take the first shot at this, addressing a couple items. Trees, that's important for the site and for just like you said about the heat, the heat waves that we have. Um, there's a couple of options for trees that I weren't discussed. One is the site itself is being constructed by someone who's going to bid on the plans. But that's not to say that, to say a county DPW with all of its equipment can't plant some trees where you just purchase a tree and they do the labor work. So I mean, if it really came down to dollars and cents, I would think you could impose upon the county to do some of the work for you. I'd like to have you look into that possibility. If it turns out that you're that tight, they could buy the trees at wholesale, they would, it wouldn't cost anything to put them in, and I would think that the county with their name on the project would be happier with that than cutting them out. Secondly, as the mayor started to say, we have been very active in getting free trees that we've been planting all around town. And some of them are very nice trees. They're not just plain old common trees, but some of them are flowering trees, some of them are, are more uh, specimen trees, and some of them, you know, they're plain trees. So uh, I would like you to also possibly talk to the mayor about, or I don't know if you have, a, a, I guess Randy could talk to them about it? You should start with Mike Corelli. Start with Mike Corelli, okay. The administrator would be able to guide you on that. talk about it. I mean, if you don't mind, what, what the chairman is saying is uh, we're always looking for places to plant trees. We have too many trees sometimes. My place is too okay. big. Okay. So if, if, if a spot would fit on your property, we can get you some trees. To yeah, the only caveat to that is when you're within the 150 foot riparian buffer, they have to be native species. Yeah, they're all native. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's the DEP will only let us put native species on the site. And that makes sense for that site anyway because it's got water on two sides. So. Yeah. And it might make it look nice, like the chairman said, we may get some flowering trees in there. Yeah. Um, another thing about the trees is uh, one of the specimen trees you call for is sycamore. You hate them. <laughs> can that be changed? What would you suggest? Yes, we can change it. Uh, uh, especially, you don't want them above the screen. I, I, I sycamores are the, one of the dirtiest trees you can get. I the thought they went out them. of I thought they went <laughs> out of favor like 50 years ago. I know. Uh, the London Plains and sycamores. Uh, most DPW people can't stand them, but tree huggers love them. So. I don't and the other one is the you know the the, the uh, pear tree that they, they don't want to well, use. Well, they're for. they're out out. So they're I mean out. you know there's certain trees that. Uh, what was the one we put on a in something or other? Um, the one by the uh, car wash. I can't think of the full name of it, but it was uh, more of a V-shaped tree. Mm -hmm. And um, a ginkgo with, I'm sorry. Was it a ginkgo? No, it, it was a uh, regular leaf tree, V-I-N something or other. The point I'm making is I would really prefer not to see sycamores there. Okay. And if you can find other trees that are we acceptable will. to the DEP, we will. Or not. I mean, gee, if one tree appeared that wasn't official, I don't know. In, in, I understand. Okay. Yes. Okay. I hear you loud and clear. Okay. Um, lights. I. The board can decide how they want to go, but I, I would agree with the engineer that 25 foot lights are just untenable. Um, I don't think we have too anything. Bad. Sorry. They're too big. Yeah, and, and I think you have to come up with a better way. I don't know if uh, on-site, on-the-building lights would be suitable, or they have to be standalone lights. Um, we'll look. We'll, we'll, we'll actually look at building lights, and maybe that may pull them off the aisle and put them in the rear. I'll, 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 we'll look into some more. So things. I was going to suggest that you look into an alternate lighting pack. For, uh, and it's up to the board to decide, but my suggestion would be to find an alternative. Okay. And um, the lights that they show that they're more like our typical um, community style lights or they're just using regular LED we're, we're using right now we're using straight LED just is the most efficient light there is uh, if you want to do a decorative light a lot of times they lose some efficiency that's the, only thing. the lights that we have in the middle of town and in our projects are they're uh, classical historical <coughs> lights from Pump and Lakes right and they're uh, they're LED lights and they're a little more money so I don't know how that falls and I'm not personally saying it has to be that, but I'd just like you to look into that. 
we will look into it well into this type of light you have. And then you can discuss with the engineers about you know what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, the office is plain. That's just a simple office for management of the facility. I saw there was a community room, which I guess Mr. Coppola will talk about. Yes. Uh, but other than that, it's just residences, right? Correct. First through four, four floors? Yes. Uh, and I see Kristen had the same comments about landscaping and lighting. So the landscaping, again, the shrubbery makes a big difference. They're not, they're not expensive. Um, yeah. And if they're flowering, all the better. It's, it's just something we like to see well, on our projects. Unfortunately, landscape architects hate me because I just usually use azaleas and boxwoods. <laughs> but azaleas are good. The, the other thing is to know that Pompton Lakes is a deer problem. So whatever you pick for low growing stuff, there'll be boxes with them. Yeah. You know, you gotta watch because they love to eat a lot of stuff. And uh, right. you know the stuff that says dairy resistant? It's not well, the, the green giants are the only shrub that I know that are somewhat deer resistant, but they grow so fast they're, they're hard to control. Mm -hmm. so, Again, it's just a, a suggestion, however you come it's up with it. It's not, I'm not the landscape architect. Right. I just know our experience in town. Uh, other members of the board who has questions, comments? Uh, just about the vinyl fence they okay. mentioned. Um, I, I would just say anything anything but white, you know, because, um, you know, that, that one road uh, is, is pretty traveled. So I think if we get about the darker fence, whether I don't know what color the building is, um, maybe something that matches that other than white. Okay. Green Sorry. or black vinyl? Yeah, any, any, anything beige. that. Yeah, yeah anything so that's just not white. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Mike gets the green on it. This looks like hell, you know, a short amount of time. Sure. So, I agree. You know, so. Yeah, use beige. Con considering the change in use of the property from a DPW to residential, uh, was a phase one or phase two environmental site assessment done on the property? Yes. And any findings? Uh, yes, there was, and it's always it, there is an NFA on it. No further action. No further action. I mean, your RAO. The RAO was, was filed, and the NFA. Yes, they're, they're all done. He's yes. our he's our super consultant for uh, <laughs> okay. contamination too. Because uh, it was all filed with the DGC. And I don't know why you would think a DPW might have something in the ground. <laughs> yeah, I, that's, I got a question. That, that was a car dealership. It was, a, <laughs> it, was, it was many things. It was a trucking company. It was a trucking company. <laughs> a construction company. I can't can that question? Back to me. Yes. Um, two comments. Uh, if you're putting any kind of street light, and I didn't see it on the plans in the, in the sidewalks, are you putting any in the sidewalks? We were not proposing any in the sidewalks. All right, because I was going to suggest if you plan on doing that in the future, at least try to match what we have in our downtown. We, if we were putting, if they were putting more on the roadways. Our, our street frontage is so small on both streets, we didn't think it was necessary. But if we do put one in, we'd obviously have to match it okay. that. And then I just question just for the residents that live on that river there, you are putting more water. You said you're dumping into the basin, into the water cube? No, we're dumping into the post. Into where? The post brook. Oh, post brook. Okay. No, we, we we don't we actually don't have any direct access to the water cube, believe it or not. Oh, okay. It's closed, but it's not direct access. The only direct access we have is on the room without it. Okay. Oh, and I had another question for Mr. Morris. Um, did you see the memo I sent out to um, address the issue of the water main fire department connections? I don't recall seeing that one, Mr. Chairman. I, I, yes, my concern is, and I discussed this with the fire official who's here tonight as well, um, when we looked at the site, it's unclear from the drawing because the water main, on the utility drawing, the water main is very, very hard to see. It's blue, I know. It's and it, it's cluttered with a lot of other stuff, so it really blocks the uh, image that we've been looking at. So the fire department connection um, is proposed on the northern end of the building. Yes. And the water main just shows a blue line with no indication of size and it runs up to somewhere near the building. We don't have any detail on that. I uh, would assume that on the architect's plan, it may show the location of the FDC, but I would like to know exactly what you're doing with the water mains coming in from the we road. Were, we were looking, uh, I think the uh, MEP engineer, you may have just gotten what the fire line has to be. It's a two inch, we're gonna have a two inch domestic end, but the fire line I believe will be the four or four six. That makes sense, yeah. but uh, you know you don't have it addressed anywhere right now. Yeah, we, we have it. Yeah, uh, we actually address it to uh, 
your uh, MUA. It'll be a t it's a two and a half inch domestic and a four inch fire. Four inch fire. To your question, Chairman, we'll, we'll provide a utility sheet that will have the details of where it's going. That's easier to read with the details. Yeah, turn some of those layers off. Yeah, yeah. Well, we yeah. can create a separate sheet. If we yeah, actually, when we go, uh, when we apply the MUA, we'll have a sheet just with the sewer and the and the fire. And the sanitary the as well, the sanitary line, the details on Which that. Goes out the locus. That's fine. And just for the record, there's no horse trading allowed on the site. That's not in the zoning ordinance. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, just sure. Yes. May I just follow up on your, on your last comment, <laughs> Mr. Morris? Have you investigated if a hot box is going to be required for this because you are quite remote? Well, we will deal with the MUA on that. There is not. This is does not have uh, Veolia or New Jersey American Water. It's the MUA's water department. So uh, understood. The backflow preventers aren't permitted to be below grade. <laughs> and typically, well, the back the backflow preventer will be in the building. Okay. As far as utility utility very, there, so. Yeah, there's a utility room in there and we'll have both the RPC for the domestic and the backflow prepare for the fire. And that is actually very close to let it go uh, Street. Okay. One other question. Do you have a fire hydrant within fifty feet of your fire department connection? No. I we propose one on the plan. Yeah, I believe the code's gonna require yeah. within fifty feet you're gonna need a hydrant, so you're gonna need a separate tap for that. Yes. Can't that was gonna be the next comment we had too, because we looked at where the hydrants are located. And we also asked about uh, the turning radii. I mean, we have a brand new tower ladder. I would hate to see that it can't get around. Well, if you just give me, the tower ladder came with uh, a program for the turning radii with it. Just have somebody email that to me and I'll, I'll put it on our plan. John, can you get that and yep. send it to uh, sure. Mr. Morris? Thank you. And as far as the hydrant is concerned, yes, I checked the site and the nearest hydrant is up on IV. Mm -hmm. So we originally do show, it's, as it's, it's hard to say, we do show our hydrant in the island. And that will obviously have to stay there because it's, I don't want the, the, for the fire department connection, have to run 150, 200 foot of hose. Well, that's one of the things we had discussed is where, do you want to go into any more detail on that, John? If you don't mind. John's also Thank our you. fire official, so sure. if you have any questions, he's the guy to ask. So my question was on that northern island in the parking lot. Yeah, it's like a 90 degree turn for the water. Is right. that designed for a fire hydrant? Yes. Okay. So that, that's the hydrant going off. It's, yeah, it's, it's, going, it's going to be the on island. the island yeah. right there. And then you can, what I always do is I show it and then I meet with the fire official and say, where do you want it? Because I've always tried to most, find the most logical place to put your first truck, to have the steamer connection up against the hydrant and then run your other connection to charge the FDC. But you, have, you always have better ideas. So. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Um, now, the FDC itself, I know you said where the location is going to be, but I see all the parking stalls in front of it. Is there going to be one that's going to be blacked out for access to the FDC? Either that or we'll have to work out a way to get it. I don't, I don't, we, we're short on parking, but I, I will make the FDC so it's successful. Got it. It might have to be go, returned and put into that near the uh, aisle where the trash is going to come. Okay. John, can the FDC actually be run away from the building? Because so that it's close to the hydrant and then it wouldn't require maybe the, uh, the parking space to be lost? Correct. It could be right there on the island and run. Because we did that with the, a, with the AMD, with the Aldi, when they put that in it, we actually put the fire department connection away from the building, and we put the hydrant right there so the engine can hook right up. So maybe you could suggest a couple things to them? Absolutely. Because, yes. again, it would put the fire trucks out of the collapse zone because you're right up and close to it. So at least here, if you had a um, right next to where the hydrant is on that northern island, it would work. Yes. Yeah, because if you see, I'm looking at the plan now, I have a blowed up version, you probably can't see. The hydrant is right in the middle of that northern island. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, we had trouble seeing it with the light blue. I know, yeah, that's why I have it in black. Got it. <laughs> Would Mr. King, when you provide the, the detail on the turning radius for the new truck, you and Jeff can work out the locations of the hydrant and the FDC connection as to where you think it'll be best, and Jeff can make it work for you. And we certainly agree to do that. We'll work, we'll work with uh, Mr. Keedy to make sure those are, are correct and location obviously the engineering needs to review it as well but mm -hmm. we'll start with you you two guys to make sure it, it works you know for the right. fire department and works and works for you know, being able to physically accommodate it but we'll certainly work 
you know, fire safety is important. So it's, 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 it's important for a building. It's probably the most important thing on the site. Right. So just quickly, one just one thing that from years ago I remember someone telling me is if you could get that fire department connection remote over to that same island, you're not dropping hose across the drive aisle. And you're not worried about vehicles or trucks driving over that it, hose, right? It depends again, it depends Distance. on how you want to fight the fire. Yeah. Because you might park the truck on that uh, in that aisle too. And then one side goes out that way, the other side goes out the other side. Right. So it's, it's, it's a matter just, of, it's just yeah. I'm putting it out there for conversation. Mm -hmm. Now while we're talking about the water supply, so that would be kind of on the northern end of the building. Right. Would there be any consideration to put one on Ringwood Ave before the main entrance? There's a, there's a cost factor. Uh, you know, I, I agree with it. it is, I think the next one is up broad. A little ways. Yeah, it's up up broad, and then it's further down Ringwood Ave, and then it's prior to railroad tracks. So it's kind of like an empty hole. By the yeah, can't run across the tracks. <laughs> that wouldn't be a good day. <laughs> Although so, there's a cartoon running around that shows the uh, fire ramp on the hoses as being across the tracks, so that it's proof the train would go over them. It's a joke, oh, obviously. So, <laughs> so I would certainly put that in for a consideration. Anyone else on the board have questions? Mr. Chairman, board just, have questions of the engineer? Mr. Chairman, just one more, I'm sorry. Sure. Um, also your EV parking spaces. You have it in a spot that goes from um, you know south to north and it has a 15 next to it. They're, so you, they're moving. Right, so those four, where do you think? They're gonna go as close to the building as possible. Probably, probably in that northern area. Okay, no, 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 no. okay, so not by the entrance there. Right. Okay. The um, the idea with EV spaces and uh, for practicality purposes is it's since they're secondary, they're 240 volts and they're they draw a lot of amperage. So you want it as close to your uh, service entrance as possible, or else you're spending a lot of money in copper. Sure. Okay. So I would just be concerned. I'll leave it up to the board. I know the ones that got put in over by Lidl. After the fact, there was concern about the green lighting, right. so I'll leave that up to the board to decide the well, location of those. Yeah, we don't want a lot of uh, iridescent <laughs> lighting. Exactly. So, well, the good thing is these can be primarily for residents. So right. They should know where they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, b bottom line is, you know, we we uh, we're very concerned about safety for the building, mm -hmm. and I'm sure when we talk to the architect, they'll have you know all the codes will be covered. Yes. And. Um, the fact that the uh, EVs now will be right next to a hydrant is pretty good, John, right? <laughs> Not bad. We're both on the fire department, so, you know, we have uh, been forewarned, and thank God there hasn't been any, but uh, EV fires are not pretty. I was so. going to say, you don't want to put one of them out. Mm. No, we don't want to put them out, but we don't want them next, you know, too close to anything where we can't get water to them either. That's right. We're actually, we actually purchased a uh, blanket. Which we're going to try to use uh, if you have a problem where you're, you're able to actually lay it across the whole vehicle. Right. What tends to snuff it out, but still. I haven't seen one work yet. Chairman, so. uh, just one more quick question. The EPW, they they're going to have parking for trucks. Is there still an uh, entrance and exit through the site for them, or are they still, they're doing their own exit or exit? They're coming off of Ivy. Everything is going to be through that. Everything's going to be off of Ivy. Nothing going through the site. Right. Yes. So we have two separate entities. Right? Two, the, the only the only thing that's shared by the two sites is the stormwater management. Okay. Anyone else on the board have questions on the engineer? Seeing none. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce the uh, architect, and then we'll, Thank you. Sure, we'll have one more set of questions at the end. Before we move on to the architect, just to circle back for a second to the trees, we certainly will pursue uh, getting trees from alternate sources, work, working with the town for trees, but it's kind of a fail-safe, I was just speaking to Jeff, 
um, we can certainly agree that we the buffer that Jeff has created of the trees along the riparian ground. We have more trees than we need there, so we can move some into the parking lot aisles. We can move some, as the the uh, planner suggested, up to the road frontage. So if we, we get a stall somewhere with, and there, I'm sure the mayor and the town will do it in the town, but there's a stall, we can relocate some of those out to the road frontage to create the street tree effect with the normal street trees that you would prefer there. Um, so, so we do have a way to, to fill that in if, if we run short somewhere in trees. So okay. we'll certainly talk about that, provide the plans, how the professionals review that as kind of a, a fail-seek scenario for trees. Absolutely. Okay. But I promise I won't move any sycamores out of the street. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with that, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We call our next witness as our architect, Stephen Coppa. Please. please state your name, spell your last. Stephen M. Coppa. COPPA. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you'll give this evening before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? And, and Steve, just to go short, um, you're a licensed architect in the state of New Jersey, is that correct? 44 years. For 44 years, one, a few years too, and you've been accepted as an expert before boards before? And before this board. And before this board. So well, we Thank you. An expert. And um, I'll turn it over to you to go through your plans, and again, just the two issues on the elevations and the facade materials and the reports that you've Get those as well, and I'll get your plans up on the screen. Here's some of your questions, and I'll try and get to them right away. Um, the early 80s and sequentially to the early 90s, I designed both of the senior citizen housing for Ponte Lakes and Butler. Uh, this is a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. uh, HUD 202, Section 8 were very restrictive, although very popular. And I'm sure you could fill them twice now, uh, or maybe three times. So sure. the demand is there, and this is quite quite more attractive and offers more for the residents and also for the town. I've done a lot of work with the County of Passaic. I'm an architect for many of their major projects. And uh, this was their initiative. The Housing Authority, Janice and, and the administration have decided to do this. And I think it's a, a big improvement to the site. Um, so basically, we have 65 units. One of the units will be, just as they were in the 202s, for the resident director. Uh, there's a meeting room and some area of kitchen space, you know, butler type kitchen, where the seniors can have activities, uh, elevators, laundry, all the accommodations for them. And all one bedrooms, just as they were in the old 202s. Same thing. Um, some of the questions that were asked regarding uh, parking, um, we actually have more. This is the same application we made to redevelopment. Now, we have more parking than we need. Uh, we're required to have 65 spaces by the ordinance. We have 85 spaces. Uh, so we did that in accommodation for visitors and others. I, based on what we saw in the other two projects, a lot of the seniors don't have phone cars. And this will be geared toward veterans, so that's another component that we're going to find an older age group. Um, some of the questions you had regarding the um, parking count, again, as I said, we're in excess of what we need. We're in excess of 65, and we testified to the redevelopment. See? Just exactly that same time, and we have 85. Um, calculations that we did on our site, Jeff will consolidate on his. Again, these are architectural. Engineer will be more precise about what he's showing for all the coverages, setbacks, etc. Uh, on Locust, Jeff said 10 feet, but the street was being vacated. It's a 35 foot street, so there's 17 feet there, and then another 10, 15 feet for our building. So there's an ample uh, site there for fire access, anything that you require uh, for uh, access around the building. This is a fully suppressed building. We'll meet the IBC, all the classification for this type of construction. It's four stories of six on a concrete slab. Very rarely, hopefully, this will be fought from the outside if there's a fire. This is fully suppressed. The time you find it from the outside, if you lost water service throughout the area, and then, of course, that's another whole issue. But most times, uh, there's none of that, um, even in combustible construction. Um, there's another question regarding I think we covered the bulk table. Just go up to them now. The lighting design, I think Jeff's going to answer that. He asked me about it also. Um, the, LEDs, the LEDs are more efficient. The luminaire is going to be an LED. It's not going to be incandescent or mercury vapor. It's going to be an LED. But they reduce the height and, of course, the shading factors that they can accommodate in the fixtures. So I'm sure they can accommodate your desire to have no light spread to these surrounding areas. 
Um, and I discussed the non-residential use. Um, we did do another elevation. This is the front elevation. It's composed of thin brick and hardy panel, which is a cementitious panel, so there's no maintenance involved. Uh, we have some freedom of color. We have a, a base of a, uh, probably a split base block to give it some interest. Um, and of course, the window, the high efficiency windows and uh, triple glazed, uh, which is what we're doing all of that. But what you see there is a combination of panel, cement panel, and thin brick. We're going to maximize the best we can. Uh, that's why I say it's a breath of fresh air. The 202s, that's my choice. You can take a look at the building and it's up around the end here. That's it. You have windows, you got brick, and that was the end of it. It was no discussion. So we're very happy to be able to contribute to that. Uh, have the colors been chosen on that yet? Um, like probably brick, it will be a reddish brick, and a dark brown brick like that, that's just a rendering. Um, but we'll make final samples available for the town before we actually build it. We do a mock-up that's typical of all our projects. So you'll see a window, you'll see the cement panel, you'll see the glass, you'll see the, uh, so you'll be able to see it. It's not going to be a dark brick like that. That's and this is the rear elevation. So inside of it. So, so this is a new exhibit. This was yeah, not we added this space so on your front. We'll mark this as A1 with tonight's date and uh, that sheet is <coughs> 201, is that correct? Correct. And is what's the title of the Building elevation. And the date of the um, uh, 531 24. Thank you. That's what you respond to your comments. Yeah, for you. Please continue. I'll go to the no, no problem. Um, Basically, that's it. EVs, these are level twos. You're not going to get on all of these here because you can't do it. You have to keep the spaces open for anybody to use them. So there's not going to be any flashy green lights or monitors from, from the distance. It's a, it's a level two. It'll be an accommodation for the residents. And as Jeff testified, they're going to be as close to the building as we can get them because we still have to provide electric service and it's expensive. Uh, we do figure that into the service demand. Um, which we will get from the JCP and L and PSMG, and uh, it will be economically proposed. I think that's all the questions you had of me, but I'm open for any comments that you have. Thank you. Um, on your layouts of the individual units, I see there's like some that have like a six chair table some that don't, and some look a little bigger than others. Is there a variance between the units? Yeah, there is. Um, but some of them are a little bit larger because of the projection forward. We did that for aesthetics. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to meet a minimum standard, and all of them exceed it. So we're fighting like hell because of budgetary constraints to keep that interest in it. We like that movement and elevation. If you go see the 202s, it's a brick wall, straight down, five stories. That's what you told you to do, and that's what you could do. So we're to give this a little interest. Yeah, some of it will be a little bit larger. Not a lot, but it's you know, two, three feet in depth. Uh, planning and engineering questions for the architect? Uh, I don't have any, I'm good. A couple quick questions, Mr. Chairman. On your elevation, I'm assuming I mean the windows are grills for mini splits? For the whole units, yeah. yeah. Detax. As far as all electric, yeah, as far as that's bugs. fine. As far as cooling your common spaces, where do you anticipate putting your condensers? Is Those will be split the back of the building. Okay, uh, so, so everything's going to be split. There'll be no condensers on the floor, nothing on the roof. Just for, just for the common areas, because we yeah. can't provide that. Some of these buildings, you get away with it. We have ventilation requirements that are much more stringent right now. Uh, by the way, these will have operating windows. These are not fixed, so if someone wants to open the window in the middle of the evening to bring the air, fresh air in, and cool down, that we do. Uh, but those are, yeah, those are through the whole PTAX. Okay. You said the buildings can be fully suppressed. NFPA 13 or 13R? Oh, no, NFPA 13. 13. So all, all, the all the interstitial <laughs> spacing of the company. Had to ask. That's how I understand. Had to ask. No, and yeah, you 13R. Question with your EV parking. So is the, the, the EV charging stations, are they going to be open to the public? No. No, it's strictly for? That's level three. That's what you see with Energize America, et cetera. Um, you have to have a lease. You have to bring in primary power. No, this is strictly for accommodation of the residents. 
And if you use those that way, you have to open them up to the public. You have no choice. That's why I was asking yeah, if right. the public was going to be able to come on site and charge right. the car if they need to. You will not be able to. Will there be any signage to that effect? Well, what you'll do is you'll have a control. So you'll either have a swipe okay. at, the, at the meter. So only people on the or site. Only will have people that are residents to the site. Or if they're visitors, they can give them a vote. Right. But again, a seven hour charge is level two. So if you have a typical EV, you get 200 miles on a charge, that's a seven hour charge. Oh, it's going to sit there for seven hours. So level three, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. And you can pay it. That's the difference. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a good idea. And I think we have to start out with four and end up with a few more based on the redevelopment of the project. So, but that's what we're going to talk about. So I'll have to turn. Okay, thank you. Any members of the board have questions? For your architect? Mr. Well, Chairman. Can't let him off this easy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, John? Just a couple of questions. So, uh, lightweight construction is going to be the uh, wood, yeah. all of it. Yeah. All right. And then we're you said. A four story on slab. What you're seeing a lot of in the area now is a four on two. So, there's a podium and then a second podium. That way you can go up to 70. Three or 74 feet. Once you reach 75 feet, you're in the high rise code. And I have to build the entire thing out of not cost on okay. it. So that's the state of the art. But we're doing on slab on green, four stories of sticks. Okay. And four you stories. said fully sprinkler stamp pipe? Fully sprinkler. Stamp pipe? Uh, yeah, north, we'll have stamp north pipe. Uh, you discussed the hydrant. I don't know anything about that right now. I'll leave that mm -hmm. project. Uh, but yes, uh, that's, that's. Okay. It. When we tore the uh, EPW building down, I oversaw that work. There is a water supply coming off a ring. We have it located. There's also a sanitary sewer coming off a ring. I'll leave that to Jeff to do the final design on that. But we already had two utilities come into the site. Oh, and gas, and, and natural gas. So uh, I don't anticipate using natural gas here because we're not completely done with the hot water analysis. Right. Heat pumps definitely for an AC and any. Uh, All right. And I, I know you're familiar with the senior housing. The stairwells are fully pressurized when the fire alarm system goes off. Yeah, that's a five story non combustible bolt. Well. Would that be? Uh, no, we have towers in here, but they will not be pressurized. They'll be standard fire towers, two hour rating between habitable spaces and non habitable spaces. Okay. Even and with they the will be sprinkled also. Even with the type of occupancy you have? Yeah, it's so not the required. Is fine, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, those buildings you see that I did in the 80s and 90s, those are five stories. They had no choice. And 202 demanded. It was a HUD 202. They told us what window to use. They had no choices at all. Lighting on the site, you had no choice. You put it in the way they so yeah. it's a little bit different, different concept. All right. Just last thing, uh, generator, is there any plans? Uh, I don't know. As I said, we're fighting a tight budget right now. We, have, we met today. We got work by the set pending this board's approval. We're going full speed ahead. Mm -hmm. This project ASAP. Okay. Um, there's some demands from the county to spend this money between now and the end of the year. So we got to get moving. Um, we had a very nice reception from your redevelopment agency. Uh, then we're back to the county and now they're ready to push forward with this with the housing authority. Uh, so we're ready to go. Basically. Okay. Because I think the generator might be a consideration because of the senior housing that we have now, yeah, we situation with the power. Another three hundred thousand dollars up here for fine. Yeah, even if it's a limited to where it's just your community center, where it's well, a safety. cooling station. You know, usually you do life safety. You put your fire alarm, you put your smoke alarm, Absolutely. your exit lighting as a minimum. Um, it's in discussion. Let me just tell you Good. that. Good, but it's right. not required by the IBC. Got it. Right. Might be a consideration, Mr. Chairman. And what is the maximum height that you're uh, projecting on the building? Uh, this is four stories, say roughly 60 feet. I think it'll be 60. I'm sorry, 60, you said? Yeah, say 50 or four, but talking about 60. There's a power bit. Mayor? Uh, just to follow up on uh, John's comments. When the power goes out for extended time, and you know that your energy is built, and we get many calls from senior housing about apparatuses they have to run or things they need because the power's out. So if it could be found in the budget, I think it's a true thing for you, it's worth the cost of just throwing them out. I know with redevelopment, they brought up, uh, are you going to be matching the grills to the color of the wall? Yeah. Right. right. So yeah. we don't want a white grill with brown. I understand. And then the last question, and maybe you want to bring Janice to know, this is a 24-hour uh, person in there. 
yes. staff, or is it just Apple? The maintenance person. Maintenance and the yeah, issue yeah. the residents are. Yeah, it's, it's an on site. You, the person will live on site okay. and run the office during the day. Okay. No other questions for Mr. Coppin? Thank you, Thank Mr. Coppin. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point, I'll open up the meeting for public comment. If anyone's here from the public that has any questions, seeing none, mm -hmm. close the public portion. Okay, so we have a, an application, we have testimony, <clears throat> we've had explanations, questions answered. There are some conditions to be discussed, which I guess you've been dutifully copying. Um, what I'll ask the board now is uh, for final deliberation, and um, I'll ask Mr. Brewer to summarize the conditions, make sure that Mr. Kemp is in agreement with everything. Uh, there's some engineering that will come your way as far as the result of the meeting. Um, I will say that um, I do thank the county and the professionals for bringing this to the board. We are thrilled to be able to say it's going to be going to happen. And uh, you know we did our best to get you guys on the agenda as quickly as we could. So hopefully um, we can move this along and help you spend your money. So uh, with that said, um, let's just run over the conditions real quick. And sure. And we'll ask for a motion. Uh, the, revised, the revised plans are gonna go to the planner and the engineer for review. Um, you're gonna sh show uh, shrubs on plans and some the landscaping. Uh, you'll relocate three to four trees um, to the parking lot. Uh, we'll provide sign details. Um, you're going to change the chain link fence to a non-white vinyl fence. Uh, you're going to work with the engineer to reduce the height of the lights. Um, let's see here. Uh, you provide an O&M manual, which will also be filed. Uh, you're going to look into the county uh, donating the labor to plant trees. You're going to contact uh, the borough administrator, Mike Corelli, about uh, getting some trees from uh, the borough to contribute. Um, you're going to uh, put the turning radius for the truck, for the fire trucks on the plans. Also investigate um, the possibility of adding a hydrant. Uh, we'll meet with the fire department and put the hydrant to put in the FTC where the and work with the fire department and, and uh, place them um, with the approval of uh, the fire department and, and the board engineer. And those are the conditions that I have. And you're going, to, you are considering a generator. <laughs> and I don't know if the board wants it condition but that the EV charging stations will be for residents only I don't know if we agree to that that's our plan they want no ugly green lights and yeah <laughs> or not viewed, viewed. Um, and then they're being moved yeah, they'll be and they're going to be moved yeah. and <clears throat> for residential use only. residents on site only okay yeah, we got that's it. everything I have in mind as well thank you comments from members of the board uh, yeah, I, uh, with the generator, I, I think we should press them on that. I, I don't think it's a big expense, and I like John's idea as far as saying, you know, have a, a, a room where they could all plug in, and um, that could be a possibility. You know, Generex is, you know, um, you know, let's say it's ten thousand. I got to bring, you know, it's maybe another twenty grand, but I think it, it's it'd be money well spent um, to to have that. Available for him, no, especially at the senior, yeah. especially at the senior building. Um, I, I think that's something we should press him on a little bit. I got to be honest with you, I really do. I think I, it's important. I think it is, and I just don't know if we are in the position where we can require. I I, I, I agree, but I don't I think, think it's a huge. Recommended. I don't think it's a huge expense for what you can gain. Yeah, I don't think anyone would argue with that. Okay, so mm -hmm. I, I think if we can, we should. But I think yeah, emphasize should, that we'd like to see that. Yes, absolutely. Um, yes. Um, Mr. Brewer, is there a way that we can have a condition that kind of more explicitly says that the applicant should continue to work with the engineer and the planner to satisfy the the, the um, 
comments in our letter just so that we understand there's more dialogue going on? I should have uh, said that explicitly, but compliance with but with all the review letters is a, would be a condition of approval, okay. except as explicitly placed on the record, they have to comply to your written satisfaction. Okay. And of course, it's subject to other approvals, which they have to get a couple in. Did you get an official letter from the MUA for service, or that's still coming? No, they just had details that they wanted answered before the hearing, so we'll continue to work with them. Okay, okay. so it's subject to all the usual things. Yeah. As to the generator, just speaking with Clark and, and our operator, um, we, we agree with the comments of the board. The issue we're running is, again, it's, the budget's getting tighter by the minute. Like I said, something as insignificant as the gazebo we might not be able to build because it's that much of a cost factor, and it's a few hundred so we will do what we can. Our priority would be is if we're limited, we can do a generator. We're limited on cash. We would certainly do the common area, cooling areas. You're saying and other people, so people can charge phones. They have phone. oxygen tanks or Things whatever. Like that. But, exactly. but to do the whole we, building, we have a compromise that we might be able to work. We'll put the transfer switch in now. And then possibly look for funding to go and get a generator in the future. It's a huge expense. It's up for, upward of three hundred thousand dollars minimum. Yeah, you can't use the little ones that we get. You can't use the generator. No, no. Yeah, that's, that's that's and then of course it's a maintenance issue. But if we put the transfer switch in now, at any time they could go out and find funding. That's not a big expense for us to do. Why don't and you then, run the gas line up to yeah, a well, point also gas. wider in the ground? Yeah. We have natural gas on site. Right. right. So, so we could do that. Depending that's on the a, size. That's yeah. a good compromise right. to give you a good faith effort that we'll try and get it done. But I can tell you right now, after today's meeting, the budgetary meeting, this is the most expensive time in the last 30 years to build buildings. The cost of materials has gone through the roof ever since the pandemic. I think know. we can put in can a... Take a little bit of money from the, the jail project that you're tearing oh. down. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Actually, I came in under budget. Oh, there you go. 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 Money. There you go. <laughs> but we will we'll put the transfer switch in, and then you know what? At that point, the whole building has to go on. You can't just use partial. It's not going to give. It's not going to give local uh, services. It's not going to give convenience out. It's going to be minimal. What you're looking for is a senior who's trapped in there in a, in a time where you lose electricity. So, but we'll look at it. Okay? The elevators are key. You know. Well, the elevator would be life safety. But again, this is not an institutional use. It's a residential use. Right. So, so we will try and do that. Okay. Why don't we just leave it that uh, we will make a strong recommendation. Right that that be done and um, I don't want to put it in there that we require it. That's not Thank something you. That we, Thank you. We appreciate your consideration. I just want to remind the board I and mean, we forget because the county's here presented. This is not a county project. Remember, right. the, day. the county's throwing some money into this, but it's a non profit. That's, that's their project. Yeah. yeah. And it is it is thank you for Mr. Mary. It is a standalone project. So the county created a separate entity, the the state county affordable housing corporation. So this this project, this property, is being bought from the county, and it's it's a standalone. So, right. like I said, as you said, we will certainly pursue asking the county to assist with things like planting trees and all. But at the end of the day, the county is saying standalone project, like you're a private developer. Um, I work with plenty of affordable housing companies that do these 100% affordable product uh, projects, and and they're not easy to build. Um, but uh, you know, but again, we will pursue any avenues we can to get any generators, anything that will help make it a better project for the town as well as the residents. We certainly, I'm not saying we're not going to pursue them. Just trying. Well, to I can see that you guys are doing the best you can. I and you know, I personally, uh, as a veteran, appreciate the fact that you're taking care of some of the veterans. Yeah. I think you know that's something that is uh, missing in a lot of places. I was thrilled when I found out this was veteran preference, and even better that it's prompted preference. So. <clears throat> Anyone else have any comments? Yeah, on, on that on that uh, topic, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, we all know how difficult it can be for like the VA to take care of veterans who have, we'll say, ongoing long-term issues. Mm -hmm. um, there's not going to be that sort of support, that medical support, that psychiatric or whatever support here in Pompton Lakes when this gets built and if it is veteran preference. I think the idea is a great idea. I don't, I'm not saying anything about that. Um, it just, you have to go with it in clear eyes. I mean, obviously if you have senior housing, you always have to recognize that you have people there that are going to have physical disabilities and there may be more ambulances, more doctors, that sort of thing. But this is another sort of diff different twist on that. 
and the the town should understand that before going forward with this because we don't have those sorts of support facilities for whatever number of veterans that are actually going to be in here again like i said i think the the project is great uh, but it, it's just something you have to go in with your wa eyes wide open <laughs> Please raise your right hand, state your name, spell your last. Janice D. John, D E J O H N. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you'll give this evening before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to so help you God? Yes, I do. And Janice, uh, just for the record, you're, you're the executive director of the State County Criminal Housing Corporation? Yes. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and explain to the board? No, no, there's no formality there, so please continue what you're saying. No, we have put thought into that, and the beauty is that we are part of the county, and we are going to use their systems, their departments. We have the senior services department. We have the veterans department. We have the health department. So we do want to bring all those services to the building as much as we can. And your point's well taken, Mr. Pendexter. I just finished a project for another client that's an affordable housing senior uh, senior and veterans project in Emerson. So I'll reach out to them to see how they're addressing those issues because they don't have the on-site care you're talking about for veterans needs. So I'll coordinate those two, my two clients talking together to the extent they can help each other on how they take care of those issues when they arise. So it was an existing project we added a couple more units on. So they probably have something in place. So I'll certainly share information to make sure it runs as smoothly as possible. But we do, you know, mm -hmm. we do a debt of gratitude to our veterans to make sure okay. we take care of them. No, so we'll, we'll certainly coordinate that. Good. Thank, Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you for the input. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? All right, I'd like a motion and a second, please, so we can move to discussion on the motion. I make a motion to approve this TB 24-04, taking into account our attorney's comments, our professional's comments and requirements, and further discussion as needed. Okay, second? I'll second. Second, Mr. Otto? Okay, discussion on board members. So I'm going to just take a, a couple of quick minutes to say thank you. Um, I think this is an excellent facility for us. Certainly what was there was not very pretty, but uh, it looks like you guys put a lot of time and thought into how it's going to look, how it's going to function. It's a reasonable size for the property. Uh, aside from what I said earlier about being a veteran thing, where you know they, they will get true benefits out of this, I, I think it's an excellent uh, addition to Pompton Lakes, and I, I thank Passaic County and its subgroup of whatever you want to call the uh, housing what, what was it housing 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 corporation corporation um, for for proceeding with this so um, comments or any other statements from the board members mayor i just was exactly said don't forget we're also getting out of this a new salt shed and a bigger recycling center mm -hmm. so now we'll have an entrance into our recycling center and out of our recycling center separate and there'll be some more space within that area to work. Yeah, so this whole project developed a lot. So these were all trade-offs that we were talking initially. You know, having the salt shed here is a big deal. And if we didn't have that shed here, we had no place to keep our salt. And we'd be, the county would be going all the way down to 23 to pick up the salt to come all the way back here and put it down. So the fact that they'll keep it here and do the so over the northern counties with the salt is going to help us tremendously. Now, out of curiosity, are you guys working in conjunction with the development of the other site, or there's no intent to combine anything of the two? No, they're, they're, they're two separate standalone sites. I know, but is there any development going to go on on the other site at the same time? Or? As the engineer indicated, we're going to be sharing the stormwater um, systems between the two sites, but otherwise they kind of stand alone. Okay. The other site will be redeveloped. So it's going to basically incorporate, because it's part of our plan's DP, it's going to incorporate uh, the exit from the recycling center into the salt shed property. So you drive into the recycling center, hit the bins, and drive out onto Lopez. That's what and is there a time frame on that? I'm just curious. I believe the contract's uh, just been awarded. Oh, okay. And then this is your looking just to do work before the end of the year? Yeah, we need to get started. Yeah, there's, there's some funding deadlines we have to meet. Okay, if um, there's no other questions or comments, I will look for a roll call vote, please. Mr. Simone? Yes. Mr. Fercaro? Yes. 
Mr. Trost? Yes. Mr. Otto? Yes. Dr. Pendexter? Yes. Mr. Keating? Yes. Mayor? Yes. And Mr. Balby? Yes. It is unanimous, and we thank you again very much for the presentation. We enjoyed having you guys here, and uh, we're very happy to see this moving forward. And if I may say that we seem solicitous, but I really do want to thank um, the, the board professionals and, and the board secretary who was very, very helpful to us and very professional. We were well represented, uh, and again, appreciate everyone getting us on quickly uh, and the board's consideration this matter. And thank you all, and have a good evening. Glad we could make it all out. Good luck. Thank you. Mr. Costa. What? Do you, do you go back to West Patterson? Oh, you saw yes. that? Yeah. Ian Bridget are always walking in. Thank you very much. It's out to me. Thank you. Now, George, I remember George was out a year and a half ago. I think you're going to see my phone. Do you? Yeah. That's great. Oh, really? That's a great project. George and I both grew up in town, so I know him well. That's awesome. I would know that the board has Jimmy Phillips here. Oh, right. No, it's a great thing. Okay, thank you. Really? That's weird. Hopefully, it gets Thank you. I do Mr. <laughs> Morris, give Kevin Bosch all my regards, please. He's very busy now trying to run the company. I don't think you've been off more than you can shoot. Okay. <laughs> and brother laughs at him. We worked with, um, I was with crew engineer, we worked with Boswell. Thank you. Oh, many times. Yeah. Let's we'll talk. Many, many times. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Give my regards. Thank you. Take care. Good night. Thank you. I don't know, that's an, oh, that's Steve. 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 Nice. Have a good night. You do. Okay, we have resolution PB 23-03 Pi Holdings LLC. Um, I just want to make a statement about this. This this resolution memorializes what we did at the meeting two months ago. It has nothing to do with what's going on today, which has some uh, issues with the building department. So this is basically the last thing that we do and once the resolution is complete, that's what goes to the building department and uh, out of our hands. So did, you, did everybody have a chance to look at that resolution? And if so, um, do you have any questions on it? Mr. Keating. Number two uh, mentions the subject property having to be the liability of getting the testing done. But I think when they said that system they're putting in, it's gonna be crossing over to the adjoining property so even though it's owned by the current owner Pi holding he owns two of them but I think Carl mentioned that it might be in the best interest that it goes on the deed for that one so I think it should be plural properties uh, just a suggestion can I see it I don't have it in front of me so let me make sure here we go here okay now. number two on top there no problem I, that was my intention because the property is listed as both lots 
but I will, uh, and it says the deeds, but I will say, I'll make it clear Properties. that it's both lots. Okay. Properties, yeah. Perfect. Subject property is defined. Subject property is lot 4 and 4.01, but I will make sure that's clear in that paragraph. Got it. Thank you. Okay, with that said, does uh, anyone have a motion for approval of resolution 23-03? Anyone? I'll make the motion. Okay, Mr. Otto, in a second, please. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a second by Mr. Keating. Any discussion on the resolution that we didn't have already? If not, roll call, please. Okay, Mr. Simone. Yes. Mr. Fercara. Yes. Mr. Trost. Yes. Mr. Otto. Yes. Dr. Pendexter. Present. Mr. Keating. Yes. Mayor Sarah. Right here. Yes. It's only two meetings a month, right? <laughs> yeah, you were here. Okay, yes. Then yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Baldy. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, the only other thing is. We were done? Carl? We go with that? Okay. The only other thing is um, <clears throat> because we unfortunately lost Anne Marie, who was on the master plan committee, um, I need to appoint another person. Rich, you had expressed interest. Are you interested in that? Sure. Okay. So we'll add Rich Picaro to the master plan committee, which is Tim and what, John? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Hey, Carl. In the second. So that will become plan. the master plan committee. Do you guys have anything else you need to add about anything? Thank you for stepping in. My pleasure. Um, sir, it's a pleasure of the board. Mr. Chairman, sir. just one follow-up. So and with the approval of that pie holdings, I'm okay with it. So deeds. Um, so I heard in, even in tonight's discussion that I guess with that paper road, Deed was not followed through and sent through. Didn't get to filed the at the county, yeah. Correct. So that's the second time. Because when we had the discussion on 1% Gav, our borough firehouse was settled 30 years ago, but it wasn't filed with the county. So what is the borough's process with following to, with the county well, I mean, to make sure that it should be the clerk, right? It does that? Well, so. No, it's it, the attorney who handles it, the. It, we went through a couple different attorneys oh, okay. in a short time. And it fell through the cracks for this last one. Thirty years ago, I can't speak. <laughs> uh, but it should go from the, the uh, clerk to the attorney, and then they should register it with the county. That's the way it should go. So, our borough clerk our files borough, it. The borough clerk is our attorney. Our borough attorney. Okay. The borough attorney then files it. Okay. And I guess you have the right as a board, and so does the council over there, to follow up and see, you know, hey, was that done? You know, that's probably not a bad idea. Because we've had it happen twice, but, uh, just to follow. Just throwing it out. We don't find out like this last one. We didn't find out until our new attorneys, we have a new attorney this year, said, "I can't find it registered." That's the only reason we do it. Oh man. Okay. So would we like to have a request made of the <clears throat> borough clerk to confirm that it was in fact filed with the county? Because she can confirm it, and even though the attorney files it, and if it hasn't been by now, then we would want to have. At some point, a letter back from Liz saying that yes, it's now, it's now on the record. Where are we as far as mayor and council first reading, second reading? It has to be first reading, it's got to be second. Okay. So at whatever point it's official, July. We would just want to make sure that it's filed. That's all. And if somebody could to send the end of July, beginning of August. <clears throat> so send a letter back to the board. Yeah. <coughs> I'll send an email or you or somebody just saying, hey, look, when this is. Officially filed, can we get a notification? Yep. That's Mr. Keating, around. I'll give you an example. Of, we represent a um, uh, sewage authority that has about 15 miles of interceptor line from many towns, and it was placed in there in the 1970s and early 80s. And as it turns out, now when work has to get done, you have to have an easement where the line is. Easement is not where the line is. So if you want to go in for many miles, it is not 
the same place where the line is installed. So things do happen. <laughs> strange, but it's not peer reviewer or say, is it? No. No. I'll tell you after. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, that's it from the uh, official agenda. Does anyone have anything else to report or questions? Mr. Mayor, what's going on with that big hole in the, down, in the downtown area? The it, building well, that's CJM. CJM got their permits. They pulled them, they paid for them, and now the 60-day count starts. He's, he's ready to start working probably maybe the next week or two. But he has 60 days, I think it was from June 6th. Was it or was that? Yeah. Something June 6th. He, has to, he gets fined if he doesn't. In fact, they pulled his permits and paid them. It's a new owner. So, no, I yeah, So it's a new owner. So uh, he pulled his permits and paid them. So he's ready to go. It's getting to be almost as long of a project as the one on the return pipe. Well, then we'll see which one. I think the one on the return pipe breaks the records. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just so the board's aware, that, and I didn't want it to be confused with the resolution, <clears throat> there were some construction done without the permits. After we had our meeting, we agreed that uh, we would uh, let them start providing they got their building permits um, with, on their, at their risk and uh, that the resolution would follow. And apparently there was um, work done prior to the permits being obtained and consequently the project was halted by the uh, the borough construction official and there is now the wall is constructed I don't know if anybody saw it and the uh, wall apparently is completely built I don't know if they've done all of the work but um, it is now in the building officials hands and the borough engineers hands to decide what has to be done since it did not it was not constructed with the final permits received and with inspections so all of that work that we did to try to push that along and get them the approval they needed to let that project complete um, is now for naught and to be determined by others we have no responsibility for it tonight's official approval of the resolution is the last thing that we do and it's out of our hands completely if anybody says anything the planning board is out of the picture as of tonight Take so it down. <laughs> Take it down and start over. Yeah. Well, <laughs> again, it, it's entirely in the building department's hands, and uh, in a way, I'm thankful that we have no more involvement with that. <laughs> so, anything you want to add to that? No. Okay. And nothing else? Then we'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Uh, All right. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all for, thank for coming and for. Proceeding with this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they have to do it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.